Mark Zuckerberg slamming leaked Facebook documents that revealed dissent over the, state's po the site's policies. Listen to this. Good faith criticism helps us get better. But my view is that what we are seeing is a coordinated effort to selectively use leaked documents to paint a false picture of our company. The reality is that we have an open culture where we encourage discussion and research about our work so we can make progress on many complex issues that are not specific to just us. Zuckerberg is fighting back. And joining me now is Vivek Ramaswamy, who's written extensively on this on the subject of Facebook. Facebook's being attacked from the left and from the right. We've heard all the analysis. Let's cut straight to it. Tell me what legislation would fix the problem. So look, I think that we need Section 230 reform, Stuart. I actually think the biggest problem with these social media platforms today that deals with the government is actually working hand in glove with the government to effectuate censorship. And Stuart, I worry a lot of the discussion that we're seeing in the face of these leaked documents is actually going to make that problem worse, to demand and empower Facebook to be able to censor okay. political speech working with the government in power. So the right answer, in my opinion, is to say Section 230 needs to be amended into an opt-in statute to say that either you get to be a private company and you get to decide what does and doesn't show up on your website, or you get to be a private company that operates with a special form of governmental immunity. But if that happens, that comes with strings attached, which means that the Constitution and the First Amendment to the Constitution still apply, and these companies are treated as state actors because they're immunized by the state. That's, I think, should be at the top of the list. The second on the list, though, Stuart, is I think a conversation as well about looking at whether there's an age cutoff before you're able to freely use social media companies. We have addictive cigarettes in this country that you can't use till the age of 18. If you're an adult, you get to make those trade-offs for yourself. I'm personally coming around to being in favor of taking a certain age, 16, 17, 18, below which addictive social media usage is off the table. And as adults, you well, can make that wait, decision wait, on wait, your own. Wait, wait, the wait, kids we treat differently. Addictive social media behavior. That's the key here, isn't it? What is it? What it is. do you call addictive social media behavior? Kids passing pictures around to each other, altering the pictures, comparing body shapes, that kind of thing. You can't ban that. Well, you, you, I think you can't, you can't ban the idea of sharing pictures. People have been sharing magazines for a long time. But there are platforms that particularly are using algorithms to be able to prey on fundamental psychic insecurities fundamental views of envy, of actually forms of life that don't exist in the real world, but appear to exist online, which, which actually relate to teen body image issues, et cetera. Now, personally, I don't think companies like Facebook and other social media companies should be held accountable for that solution. The real solution lies upstream in our society itself, and Facebook and other social media platforms really just amplify those cultural issues. But on the other hand, Stuart, we ought to treat children differently than we ought to treat actual full-grown adults. Adults ought to be able to make those trade-offs. You can decide whether you want to smoke a cigarette or not and face the consequences. You can decide whether you want to use social media companies and face the psychological consequences and trade-offs. Okay. As an adult, you it, get to make those decisions in a free society. If Kids you did are this, different. If you did this, if you put in the age requirement and if you repeal 230 or whatever it is you repeal or change 230. Change. Change, change 230. 230 yep. Would Facebook still be as profitable as it is today? I don't think Facebook would be as profitable as it is today. I think it would still be a plenty profitable company. I also think it would create the conditions for greater competition for somebody to actually be able to stand up to Facebook on the, on the prong of Section 230 reform. I think on the prong of kids, I think that's going to be better for our societal fabric as a whole to have fully formed adults before they're ultimately subject to the forces of algorithmic social media interference. But at the end of the day, they might be less profitable companies as a consequence, but that's actually going to be a good thing, I think, for society as a whole. Vivek, thank you very much for direct answers. Always appreciated, sir. Thanks a lot. We'll see you good again. seeing you.